Before this video starts, if you enjoy this video, there are many more like it on the channel already, with many more like it to come in the future, so subscribe. I'm trying to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so I would really appreciate you clicking that button. Also, drop a like on the video. It also helps me reach that goal because it recommends me in YouTube's algorithm, and I really appreciate it. Today, continuing the Trades Revisited series, I wanted to look at the Kyrie Irving trade between the Cavs and the Celtics that happened over two years ago. In the first two videos of this series, I talked about some fairly one-sided trades, the Knicks trading Kristaps Porzingis to Dallas and the Spurs trading Kawhi to the Raptors, both deals with one clear winner. However, in the case of this trade for both teams and for the players involved, this trade seems to be nothing but either a loss or just inconsequential. On April 22nd, 2017, the Cleveland Cavaliers traded Kyrie Irving to the Celtics in exchange for Isaiah Thomas and the Brooklyn Nets first round pick. And this deal ended up blowing up in the face of the Boston Celtics and ended up just being an underwhelming package for the Cleveland Cavaliers. So let's look at this trade and see what went wrong. Let's look at the Cavaliers' side of this deal first. The Cavs got back Isaiah Thomas and a pick that was expected to be in the lottery. Let's look at the player here first. Isaiah Thomas, the season prior, averaged nearly 30 points per game on incredible efficiency as a 5'8 point guard. It was truly a remarkable season. He was an all-star starter. He led the Boston Celtics to the first seed in the Eastern Conference. So the Cavaliers fully believed they were getting a lethal scoring guard back in exchange for a lethal scoring guard. The one concern with Thomas was a thigh injury that he got in the playoffs, ironically against the Cavaliers. And that concern would unfortunately come to fruition as Isaiah Thomas would never be the same. For the Cavs in the 15 games that he played, he averaged 15 points and 5 assists on 36% shooting from the field and 25% shooting from 3. Part of this was just that Isaiah simply wasn't the same, however, it also did not help that the Cavs did not have a good coach who knew how to work around Isaiah's height disadvantage. Of course, at the end of the day, Thomas had to put the ball in the bucket himself. But Brad Stevens had an offensive system that was perfect for Thomas. It allowed him to attack the basket despite being 5'8", and it allowed him to get multiple open looks off ball for three. The Cavaliers essentially gave the ball to Isaiah Thomas and expected him to be the same that he was in Boston, and that especially did not work out playing next to LeBron James. Because with the Cavs essentially making Thomas useless without the ball, it meant that the ball would have to be out of LeBron's hands, which obviously was not ideal. So the Cavs ended up trading Thomas after a very brief stint to the Los Angeles Lakers for Jordan Clarkson and Larry Nance, sending a first rounder of their own on the way, that first rounder turning into Mo Wagner, who's actually been pretty damn good. Clarkson ended up shitting the bed in the playoffs for the Cavs and Nance was solid, the Cavs later traded Clarkson to the Utah Jazz for Dante Exum and two second round picks. And as for Isaiah Thomas, his career has completely fizzled out. After an underwhelming and brief stint with the Lakers, he then signed a cheap one year deal with the Denver Nuggets, who really didn't have room for him in the rotation after they broke out as one of the best teams in the league, with a point guard already in Monte Morris, who was one of the best backups in the league. There was just no place for Thomas on the Denver Nuggets. He then signed with the Washington Wizards, who on paper would have been the perfect option for him. John Wall would not be playing this year, the Wizards had no expectations to be good, and there was only one scoring option that was clearly ahead of Isaiah Thomas on the totem pole in Bradley Beal. This was the perfect spot for Isaiah to get buckets with minimal expectations, however why Thomas put up decent numbers in Washington. He was traded to the Clippers in a three-team deal, and he was released by Los Angeles. His NBA career is likely over. The harsh truth about Isaiah Thomas is just that he simply is not that valuable when he isn't one of the best offensive players in the league. He needs to be ridiculously good offensively for him to be worth playing large minutes, or at the very least, he has to be one of the best six men in the game, and unfortunately, after his injury, that has just not been the case. 
Isaiah at 5'8 is just a massive liability on the defensive end. He could make up for it when he was dropping 29 points a game on a 63% true shooting percentage, but now that the best he has done since is 12 points a game on 53% true shooting percentage, he just isn't worth playing because he is too much of a negative on the defensive side. But on that sad note, let's look at the draft pick that the Cavs got back in this deal as well. When the Cavs made this trade, they were really trying to have their cake and eat it too. Because Cleveland was in a weird position when Kyrie asked for this trade, because LeBron's free agency was looming. The Cavs were stuck with two options, make a deal for an established talent to try and win this year with LeBron to one obviously win and to get LeBron to stay, but there was also the viewpoint that it was inevitable that LeBron James would be leaving the Cavaliers and that they would not be beating the 2018 Golden State Warriors, so they should just prepare for that. Because something I don't think people mention enough is that the 2017 Cavaliers were a better team than the 2016 Cavaliers, it just did not matter because the Warriors were ridiculous. So if they came in with a better team and lost in five games, they weren't going to be doing better without Kyrie Irving. So because of that, there was also the avenue they could take, which was to trade for young players and draft assets because LeBron was going to leave and you needed to prepare for the aftermath of that. The reason I say they tried to have their cake and eat it too was they traded for an established talent in Isaiah Thomas, but also a pick that was expected to be high in the lottery. At this point, the Nets were expected to be one of the worst teams in the NBA. Many people expected that pick to be a top three pick. It's actually why I made my first video that blew up years ago, proposing the idea that the Cavs should trade that pick for DeMarcus Cousins. Wow, that thumbnail is horrible. And also, that makes me feel old that trading for DeMarcus Cousins seemed like a smart idea, and it was only two years ago, good god. Of course, that did not work out, as the Nets were actually surprisingly decent, setting the foundation for the playoff team that they would be in the following year, so that pick landed at, I believe, number 9, and they drafted Colin Sexton. Colin is certainly a good player, not a great one. He's not really a point guard, just an undersized two guard who is an inconsistent shooter. He might make a few all-star teams here or there, but he certainly isn't a future perennial all-star in my view. So basically, when you break down every move that happened after it, the Cavs essentially got back Colin Sexton, Larry Nance Jr., and two second-round picks for Kyrie Irving. But because they didn't commit all the way to going for young players, this return is pretty underwhelming. Especially considering what they could have gotten with the value that Kyrie Irving had at the time. Now let's look at the Celtics. Now, as weird as Kyrie Irving in Boston was, there are less weird tangents on their side of this thing. Basically, the Boston Celtics traded for Kyrie Irving, and other than Gordon Hayward's gruesome injury in the first game of the season, everything was going fantastic. Kyrie averaged 24 points on just short of 50-40-90 shooting splits, like he was literally 0.9% off from field goal percentage and 0.9% off at the free throw line. And the Cavs found immense regular regular season success. They ended the year with the second best record in the Eastern Conference. However, Kyrie Irving unfortunately had season-ending surgery, which was supposed to take the Celtics out of contention. However, they managed to go deep into the playoffs without their two best players. Beating the Bucks in seven games, the Sixers in five games, and going to Game 7 versus the Cavs, who were led by LeBron, who was a man on a mission. He averaged 34-9-9 on 53% shooting for that series, and the Celtics only lost Game 7 by 8 points. So the Celtics without Kyrie were literally just one good run in that game away from making an NBA Finals appearance. Now this seems like it'd be a positive, but it unfortunately led to a rift between Kyrie and the rest of the young players on this team that made that run. The young players felt they didn't need Kyrie and especially didn't need his bullshit leadership, and Kyrie looked bad by comparison because this team did so well without him. This led to the following season being nothing short of a disaster. With a whole lot of inconsistency, weird-ass quotes from Kyrie Irving, and the team quickly fizzling out in the second round of the playoffs, which led to Kyrie Irving leaving the Celtics in the offseason. And because of this, Kyrie's reputation around the league has gotten quite sour. 
He's still viewed as an amazing talent. There is no denying the skill of Kyrie Irving. He's one of the most skilled offensive players ever. However, he is a really toxic presence in the locker room, and this trade really exposed that. This trade is really weird because I wouldn't necessarily say this was a loss for either team, just the players involved, but I also definitely wouldn't view it as a win. It was certainly a negative for the two players traded. Isaiah Thomas has likely played his last days in the NBA, when staying in Brad Stevens' system could have kept him around as at least a decent six-man, and Kyrie's reputation has completely completely gone to shit. And as for the actual trades, I don't think the Celtics wouldn't do it over again, but you can definitely say the outcome was less than ideal. And then on Cleveland's end, this was a very underwhelming return for Kyrie Irving. It was far from the worst trade package you could have got, but the return for Boston ended up being basically nothing for a lottery pick and Isaiah Thomas, who I believe could have still been decent in Brad Stevens' system. And as for Cleveland, the return isn't nothing. Sexton is a good player, not a great one, but a good one. Larry Nance Jr. is a good role player. Those two second rounders could possibly turn into something. But when you consider the value that Kyrie Irving had at this time, especially considering the fact that he was still on a two-year contract, there is certainly better return that you could have gotten out of this scenario. But really, when you look at this trade in general, it's just a whole lot of meh. But... That's the Kyrie Irving trade revisited. That's the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this and cue the outro music.